This is the third lesson in Unit 10, and what we actually looked at in the previous lesson was how to multiply this out using FOIL. Um, and I've gone ahead and put the answers here. And um, what we're going to do in today's lesson is we're actually going to do this in reverse. So I'm going to give you the answer to the question, and then you've got to tell me what the original question was. Well, that's certainly how it appears if I present it this way. Now, when we actually do that, we call it factoring, and the reason being so is... When we factor something, we look at multiples, things that we can multiply together to give us that answer. Now, we also looked at connections between these things here as well. So the reason we get x squared for all our answers is because we always have x and x in our parentheses. Um, notice all the answers are either 15 or negative 15, uh, and that's because 5 times 3 gives us 15. Now, the ones that give us positive 15, notice it could either be two positive signs, or it could be two negative signs. So that's important as well. If we've got negative 15, that happens when one of them is positive and one of them is negative. So that's an additional clue that we can use to help us. Now notice the middle numbers. Some of them are 8, some of them are 2. Now the ones where it is 8, because I got 5 and 3. Positive 5 plus 3 gives me positive 8. Or negative 5, take away 3, gives me negative 8. For 2 and negative 2, that's the ones where it's subtract here. Because 5 take away 3 is 2. Or if you do it the other way around, 3 take away 5 gives you negative 2. So we're going to be using those clues to try and help us answer these questions. So if I've got a question like this, and I've deliberately highlighted things in different colours to try and draw our attention to certain things. If I was doing this question, the first thing I'm looking at is I'm looking at the last number. And I'm trying to think of two numbers that multiply together to make 12. Or really, I'm trying to find one number that is a factor of 12. So if I find 1, I can just say how many times does 1 go into 12. And that's one that you, a lot of people do forget to do. Uh, 2 is also going to 12 6 times. 3 is going to 12 4 times. And actually, after you've done each one, what you should really try and do is add the two numbers together that you have and see if it actually makes this middle number. So 1 plus 12 is 13, no good. 2 plus 6 is 8, that's no good. 3 plus 4, perfect. Now, as we're starting to fill in the answer, we could immediately put for this question actually x and x. As it starts with x squared, I know I'm going to be doing x times x. As we just found it's 3 and 4, I can go ahead and fill in 3 and 4 as well. Now, I noticed also, with this being positive 12, this plus sign has two things. It tells you you're going to add your two factors together, but it also tells you that both signs are going to be the same in my answer. So to get 12, it's either positive 3 and positive 4, or it could be negative 3 and negative 4. Now, to finish with positive 7, though, clearly it must be positive 3 and positive 4. So I'm only looking at this part here, but if I do positive 3 plus 4, then I do end up with positive 7. Now, you should never have to ask, is these questions right or not? Because you can actually use FOIL to check your answer. So, x times x, x times 4, 3 times x, 3 times 4. And if you simplify those middle two terms, you do indeed end up with 7x. Now, I changed the question this time, but I left it with 12, so because we already have those numbers created. I've left this as a plus here, so both sides are going to be the same. This time I'm going to add together to try and make negative 13. Now you can just think of it as 13 if you prefer. Uh, and that, for that reason it's going to be 1 and 12. So x and 1, x and 12. they both got to be the same. Now if I make these both positive, positive 1 plus 12 is positive 13. I want negative 13 though, so clearly this must be negative 1 and negative 12. And check on your calculator. Negative 1 take away 12 is indeed negative 13. Now, at this point also, it's worth reminding you, you can also have this as the answer as well. Using the commutative rule, you can write your factors either way round. So, just because yours is written in the opposite way around to your friends, that doesn't mean necessarily you made a mistake. They should both be perfectly good answers. Now, we're going to change something now. This time, I'm going to make this a negative at the end. Now, from the warm-up, that was a couple of implications. One is that this time we're going to subtract the two numbers that we think of to make the middle number. Um, but also it tells us that our signs in the question are going to be different. So one must be positive and one must be negative. I can see the x squared there straight away. So I can fill that in. As I know the signs are going to be different, I know one's positive, one's negative. I can go ahead and fill that in straight away as well. This time I'm going to subtract to make positive 4. Now, if I do 2 take away 6, I get negative 4. So you might just want to focus on the 4 part first. So it's definitely this. And then I've just got to think which way round do I want to subtract. Well, I'd like to do 6 take away 2 to give me 4. 
If I switch the numbers around, 2 take away 6 gives me negative 4. So if this would have said x squared subtract 4x, then that would have been the correct answer for that one. This one can look a little more confusing. Um, the signs are different again, so I know straight away I can put x plus x minus. Two numbers at times to make 12, and I'm going to subtract them, but there's no number here for the x. So remember that means that it's going to be 1x. Or if I'm being very particular, I guess really I'm trying to get negative 1 for this. So 1 take away 12 can give me negative 11, or if I subtract the other way around, positive 11, no good. 2 take away 6, negative 4, or the other way around, positive 4. 3 take away 4 is negative 1, so 3 take away 4 is going to give me my correct answer. So as you're doing these questions, you can actually do them fairly quickly once you get used to these few rules, making sure you understand the significance of what the negative means here or if you get a plus sign here. Um, let's just look at one more, and we're going to focus more on this in the following lesson. If I get something with only two terms, like a binomial, you can still answer this question if you insert 0x into the middle of this question. So I need two numbers that times to make 25, and they're going to subtract to make 0. Well, I don't have much choice for this, 1 and 25, or 5 and 5. So 5 take away 5 is 0, so I know for this one then it's going to be x and 5, x and 5. And also, I know straight away the signs are different. So as these are the same number, it doesn't really matter which one I put first. So x plus 5, x minus 5. Now, actually, for this question, this one's called difference of squares because x squared is a perfect square, but also 25 is as well because you can write that as 5 squared. Now, in fact, if you actually notice that at the start, you can actually use this shortcut straight away. As soon as you've figured out what the two things are that you have to square, you take those two things, put one with a plus and one with a minus. So if I was to ask you another question like x squared minus 100, as long as you recognize this as 10, you could say x plus 10, x minus 10. And when I say 10, I should say 10 squared gives me 100. So that one's worth remembering because obviously that's a very quick way of writing down that answer. And you should know your square numbers from the previous unit when we were doing square roots as well.